Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Limis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Ex-firefighters take the stand to request back their jobs. Also tonight, jury reaches a verdict for a woman who tried to trick the U.S. government. And a local out in the States does research about his homeland and airs his concerns. In sports, Marlon, look out. Here come your predators. It's Derby time. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skip Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skip Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. So up until now, the only ways we've had to fight COVID are closing things down, which has been really hard on people here in the CNMI. Um, a lot of people have lost jobs, and a lot of people have lost incomes. Uh, and although it's been effective, it's not sustainable. It's not something we can do forever. Um, vaccination is a way for us to safely resume a lot of those things that bring vibrancy to the CNMI, to hopefully reopen to tourism in some safe capacity, to get people back to work in various service industries. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team, and you cannot spell team without me. M-E. Get a shot. An opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID-19. See? So let's go for a save. A strikeout. A knockout punch. That's our O. Oh! V for victory. V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win, and we can all celebrate. Half a day to the Wami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, July 7, 2021. It's my body, it's my choice. The terminated firefighters appear before the local court explaining why they refuse to take the COVID-19 vaccine. In the courtroom of Associate Judge Joseph Camacho, the recently terminated firefighters took the stand and explained why they should be reinstated in their jobs. Eight of them testified Tuesday afternoon. Most of the firefighters told the court that the vaccine shouldn't be forced upon them and they should be able to make their own choices for their own bodies. A lot of their reasons circulated around the fear of unknown effects that may pop up later down the line. They added that they believe the vaccine is still in a clinical trial and has not even been approved by the FDA. Their refusal on taking the vaccine is not based on religious beliefs, but rather is a personal choice of deciding what goes into their bodies. 
Sean Kaipet shared in his testimony that he already has a bad experience of after effects of one vaccine he was forced to take during his time in the military. Kaipat stated he took the anthrax vaccine back in 2002 before his deployment to Buran. Six years later, he developed an autoimmune deficiency that caused him to be bedridden for six months. And then in 2012, he received an email from the Department of Defense urging him and all the others to get checked because of later found effects of the anthrax vaccine. Kaipat says he does not want any more foreign bodies in his system. The rest of the firefighters say they want more studies to be done. After hearing from the plaintiffs, Judge Camacho placed the matter under advisement. Last month, the nine firefighters filed a lawsuit against the CNMI Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services and its chief, Dennis Mendiola, demanding to be reinstated with injunctive relief. Poa Sabido, Jose Angui, Alan Calvo, Kane Kostru, Arjunon Flores, Derek Gersonde, Sean Kaipat, Philip Callen, and Adam Safer are being represented by attorney Jeffrey Horry. A federal jury reaches a verdict on a woman who is being charged on conspiracy to defraud the USCIS. Around 2 p.m. Tuesday afternoon, a 13-person jury came to a unanimous decision and found Servillana Soriano guilty of count one of conspiracy to defraud the United States. Soriano was allegedly in involved in a CW1 petition scheme back in 2019. Chief Judge Ramona Manglonia ordered Soriano to come back to federal court on November 12 for her sentencing. According to the indictment, Soriano, along with three other individuals, agreed to defraud the USCIS by deceitful and dishonest means in the evaluation of CW1 non-immigrant visa applications. The indictment states that RES International would submit a CW1 petition that would falsely represent that an employer-employee relationship existed between RES and the beneficiaries. A concerned citizen who spent four years researching land matters pertaining old churches in the CNMI seeks help from the legislature. Raymond Borja Kitsigua has taken his concerns of land ownership to members of the CNMI legislature. According to Kitsigua, there are five lots of land on Saipan that is not owned by a person of indigenous descent. The land that he refers to are where the Catholic churches are built on. Kitsigua alleges that currently the land belongs to the Diocese of Guam. According to the transitory uh, agreement, I mean, when they were um, transferred to the Commonwealth, all those land uh, transactions should have been registered and a new agreement should, be, should have taken place by the, the Vatican. I'm talking about the Vatican here with the new elected government, the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Kitsagua claims that he's done his research and has found out that the Diocese of Guam has filed for bankruptcy and has liquidated their assets to settle molestation cases. His fear and reason for reaching out to the legislature and the media is that if the money is short, they may use the land in Saipan to fulfill payments. Who is to say that Saipan would not go into the federal bankruptcy and to be liquidated? And if that happens, Article 11 and special Article 12 will die overnight. That is the nightmare that I've been saying that can happen because technically, legally, the, the title is a life at this moment. It's never been changed. Greg Guerrero from the Department of Public Land states he did speak with Kitsugua, but could not address questions pertaining to private lands. DPO is not a part of, you know, uh, to answer those kind of questions because it was deeded during the trust territory era. Guerrero then advised that all questions be submitted in writing for a more appropriate answer. As for Kitsugua, he awaits response from the legislature. The Northern Marianas College and the Department of Corrections sign a Memorandum of Agreement for Training of Cadets. The CNMI Department of Corrections will be running their academy soon, and included in the training will be classes offered by the college. Once the cadets complete training, they will earn 40 college credits. 20 more and they can obtain an AA degree. What this allows the academy to do is to make sure also that those participants who are going through the training, um, like you said, there's constitutional law and there are many other classes and training opportunities that expand you know, our cadets' uh, understanding of the law 
and the way, of course, they do their job, but also they'll be earning uh, how many credits? 40 credits. Corrections Commissioner Wally Villa Gomez also expresses his gratefulness for the agreement. So we first met with uh, NMC and we started, you know, planning, having meetings, and here we are right now uh, fulfilling our goal as to sign the MOA. As I know it was a couple years back why if it was the last time they did an MOA with uh, DOC. So I'm glad that you know we're moving forward and we're going to reach our goal and have more uh, DOC officers on board. NMC has signed MOAs with the Department of Public Safety, Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services, Division of Customs, and now the Department of Corrections. Coming up, local journalists conduct a research and premieres their findings this weekend. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. I would recommend websites like the CDC website, Mayo Clinic website, any established um, hospital system or healthcare system. I suspect that Kaiser has a lot of information out there. I would go um, to known websites, WebMD, Healthline, they all have a, a, a lot of information that is reliable and w well thought out. I would much less go to blogs and the individuals who are looking at it from their own perspective and not necessarily science. Drop into the Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym for a quick and healthy meal. It's fast food that's good for you. Our July Smoothie of the Month has oatmeal, peanut butter, raisins, and cinnamon. It's a healthy blend of 450 calories that's perfect for a meal replacement or supplement. Shake it up at Gold's Gym. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Marianas Tourism Education Council revives its scholarship program. Students who are members of the MyWave clubs have a chance to get scholarship money for college. The Marianas Tourism Education Council will award a $2,000 scholarship and a $1,000 scholarship for two seniors who are MyWave club members for at least a year. Eligibility requirements also include at least a 3.0 GPA, recommendation letter, 
essay submission, acceptance letter from chosen college or university, proof of active MyWave participation, and community involvement summary. The applications will be available at the MVA office when the new school year starts. The Northern Marianas Humanities Council announces the first episode of Minagahit Elet to be premiered this week. Dr. Francis Delisai, who is a researcher from the University of Guam, conducted a survey from hundreds of people in the Sinemai on whether or not fellow community members trust the local media. This Friday at 11.30 a.m., he will present his findings through a webinar. The episode will also feature Thomas Manglonia, who is a journalist from Rota. Manglonia will discuss his experience covering regional issues. To register for the webinar, you may visit their website. We turn it over to KUAM for the latest news on Guam. Hi, today, Sinemai. I'm Tyler Matinani. Here's what's making news on Guam. A classic example that if you see something, say something. And that's exactly what a free diving instructor did Saturday morning, prompting emergency officials to respond. Sabrina Salas Matinani reports. He's been teaching free diving for years, but class was cut short Saturday morning. I've never been in the water here or anywhere in the world where um, I've been in any kind of product spilled into the water, oil or diesel or otherwise. Farron Tyron was with a group of four of his students when he noticed and felt something suspicious. He immediately began documenting the experience, posted it on social media, and contacted authorities. But the smell of the oil coming off of that, the fumes is really apparent. And worse than that, my entire body is slick. I can feel the oil. You can even see the oil. I very quickly made the decision to get everybody out of the water as quick as possible. Um, I didn't know what it was, if it was, if how toxic it would be, just to be if, if there was any kind of toxicity with skin contact. Tyron says it appeared the oil slick stretched from around the Gulf Pier to the Hotel Wharf area and the outer Upper Harbor area. At the time, I got out of the water, so it was about a half mile stretch all the way at Gulf. It seemed about. 30, maybe 30 feet wide or so, and then over at Hotel, it was about uh, maybe 50-some feet wide. He reported the incident to Guam EPA, and within minutes, he says the U.S. Coast Guard, who has jurisdiction over the matter, responded. Guam EPA spokesperson Nick Lee says it appears to have been a discharge of diesel. There's an approximate, approximation of five gallons that uh, was released. Port Authority of Guam and Guam Shipyard uh, representatives uh, deployed the sausage booms and the absorbent pads uh, in the corner of the beach where product was be, uh, was observed pooling around that. Although the source of the discharge is still being determined, the Guam EPA is advising the community to come forward to report incidents like this and commending Tyron for seeing something and saying something. It was the right thing to do. Uh, very. Uh, he acted very quickly, especially in a, you know, incidents like this where uh, timing is, is key for successful mitigation. So uh, that, that, uh, that's something that we're very grateful for. If you're ever out in the water and see something, you can make a report to the local Coast Guard at 671-355-4824. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUAM.com or downloading the KUAM News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. All right, thank you. Coming up, this year's Fishing Derby has an interesting twist. Find out what it is in the KSPN2 Sports Report next. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe right? 
If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. Buenos sports fans, it's on like Donkey Kong. You know, this year marks the 40th anniversary of that video game, Donkey Kong. Well, the uh, International Fishing Derby here is turning 37 years old, so you could say that our derby is as strong as Donkey Kong. This year heralds the 37th running of Saipan's biggest and baddest fishing tournament of them all, the Billfish Derby, in search of the Pacific Blue Marlin, as fine a fighting catch as any in the deep blue sea. I'm super excited. Why? Um, well, you know, we, we didn't really have a derby last year because of the COVID. Uh, we, we had it one day, but it was nothing to the scale of our normal derbies. You did it to keep the consecutive streak yes, going that, alive, that, right? That's what we did. Just to keep it going and, and give something for the fishermen to do, although it wasn't, you know, full scale. But this year, um, I'm just, I'm, for some reason, I'm just excited to have it back. When this derby began, back in 1985, it was the only game in town, but that's changed over the last few years. We have all these tournaments, uh, you know, we do a couple. We do the international, we do the mahi, and Tasiti Table does 
Uh, I believe they have a tuna mix and a Oahu and even over in Tinian for the Pika Fest uh, and the, uh, the Tinian Fiesta and the Rota Fiesta. So we've got a number of tournaments, uh, but this is really the big one. Yeah. This is the big one everybody looks forward to. Guam anglers won several tournaments in the past. Mike James from Guam, in fact, holds a current record of 942 pound fish. Oh, a record that we may never see broken in our lifetimes. But that's not going to stop anyone from trying. This morning, SFA President Tony Scragg was down at Smiling Toe. We are expecting eight boats this morning. They should be arriving uh, here at about uh, 11 o'clock. Um, and with the blessing of the COVID task force, um, we've got the Guam boys coming over. You know, they 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 run the same uh, procedures. They pre-register on their declaration form online. They'll come down here, get tested, um, and if everything works out, then then we're good. While the return of the two-day tourney, so too are the prizes. So our prize level is going to be uh, maintained what we had uh, not last year, but the year before, the 35th. Um, and we do have the, the record-breaking prize for the uh, fish that breaks the 942. Um, we do have a Budweiser uh, Bud 500 prize for a fish that breaks 500. There's a $5,000 prize for that. Heretofore, it was only a record-breaking marlin that brought in the Buku Bucks. This year, three other categories are opening up thanks to a generous corporate donation. We also have uh, uh, record-breaking prizes covered by the TSL Foundation for the other three categories. One of the three, only one, the first one to get broken of the yellowfin, the mahi, and the wahoo. Is that new? That's new. And that was uh, sponsored by uh, the TSL Foundation. The popularity of this derby has expanded greatly over the last several years to the point where observers need to plant their chairs and tables along the marina early. We do this tournament for all the uh, men and women out there who, who enjoy fishing. And uh, we look forward to the crowds down here. Come on down at, at 4 to 5 p.m. And, and see the fish coming in and the boats coming in. And it's going to be a great weekend. Tony, as someone who's been to, I think, every single tournament for 36 years, yep. it gets crowded down here. Yes, the Smiley Cove. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. <laughs> it, you better bring, you better come early. Yeah, come early, reserve your spot, because uh, it will get crowded. <laughs> like it always does. Captain Pete Sablon's the defending champion. Day one of the derby starts 6 a.m. Saturday and ends at 6 p.m. Then day two, Sunday, 6 a.m. starting and then at 6 p.m. It's all oba. You know, I wonder if the ancient people had, uh, you know, fishing contests outside the reef in the sailboats going up and down. Imagine that. Well, you don't have to imagine it. You can see it this weekend for real. 500 sails is entering four sailing canoes in the Derby. That's the first time in its 37-year history. It'll be the canoes versus the outboards. Hey, you know the difference between a motorboat fisherman and a canoe fisherman? The canoe fisherman doesn't complain about gas prices. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! We're in a race whether we know it or not. And build our new normal. Enough of my to be out. Let us activate the light. You have the flexibility to work out between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. At Gold's Gym, we call this off-peak, and it can save you money. Short-term daytime memberships on sale now, just $59 per month, and gets you access to the biggest and cleanest fitness center on island. Get yourself healthy and strong. Check out Gold's Gym today. Eco Camp starts Monday, July 12th at Mariana's Trekking Camp. Activities include hiking, snorkeling, off-road and kayaking, field trips, arts and crafts, and go-karting. You can sign up online at marianastrekking.com. Just $100 per session includes lunch. See you at Eco Camp. Get out and get into gear at Eco Camp. Designed for ages 6 and above. Experience go-karting, off-roading, kayaking, snorkeling, hiking, and field trips. Sign up online at 
MarianasTrekking.com and take advantage of a special weekly rate of $100, including lunch. Starts July 12th. See you at EcoCamp. You have a phone, a game, an iPad, a laptop? Good. Leave them at home because the screen time at EcoCamp is sunscreen. Hike, bike, kayak, snorkel, off-road, and go-kart. EcoCamp starts July 12th at Marianas Trekking. Sign up at MarianasTrekking.com. All right, today was, well, if you want to say it was hot as the 4th of July, you're almost there. It's hot as the 7th of July. Today's heat index 107. That's the highest of the year. The thermometer hit 90, the low only 81. 71% humidity. Tomorrow, more of the same. Partly cloudy, isolated showers here and there. Winds out of these 5 to 15. High 90, low 80. Seas 3 to 4 feet. Sunrise 552. A low tide, 1 past 1. A high tide at 618. Sunset, I hope it's a good one. 651. That's it. That's your midweek edition of the new sports and weather. Thank you so much for watching KSPN2. See you back here on Friday.